What's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to be doing is getting up and running for beginners. So this is going to be like a quick reference of what you can do inside of One Photo Raw and really start to modify images quickly. Now, I am a, a huge fan of taking time to edit the photo the way that you need, but I know that many people who are maybe new to photography or new to editing photos in general are looking for a way of modifying their images quickly and simply. And On One Photo Raw is a perfect tool for doing exactly that. So let's go ahead and jump into the computer and take a look at what we can do. So here we are inside of Photo Raw 2024, and this photo is just severely underexposed. So the very first thing that I want to do is activate Brilliance AI. And what I'm going to do is come over here and click on Brilliance AI. And this is going to think through for a little bit. And we'll wait for that to kind of think itself through. It doesn't take too long, but it is a process that you have to be patient with. And know that this is just a starting point. For many people, this could be exactly where you need it to be. And you'll be good to go. But I've heard some people saying that Bruins AI kind of bakes images to the exact same end result. And part of that is true. But the other part is you got to know what you're trying to get out of the tool. So for beginners, I think that this is a great place. This is where you could stop if this is all you need to do. However, I think we can go a little bit further into modifying the image. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm not going to worry about fine tuning here other than maybe modifying the color amount. All right. And I'm just pulling this until I see if it's doing something that I wanted to do, but I'm actually okay with the color amount here. Now, if you're not okay with the color, your image is going to look a little bit different, but that's why we're not going to spend too much time with the fine tune aspect. I'm going to leave this at 50%. And what I'm really going to do is jump down to the tone and color, because this is where we're going to make our money when it comes to modifying the overall image and really fine tuning what it is that we want this global adjustment or the adjustment that goes across the entire image. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and start working on. The first thing here, because I'm working in a raw image, I'm going to open up my camera profile. Uh, menu here. This only works on raw images. If you're working on a TIFF, JPEG, PNG, that's not going to work. However, if you have a raw image or a digital negative version of the image, then you'll be able to come through here and select some of these. And one of the things that I really enjoy selecting when there's people involved and my goal is to brighten the scene is portrait, either on one portrait or you can come down to camera portrait and in the new version of on one photo raw 2024 we have the dcps they'll stand for digital cinema profiles and what that does is it allows you to put a new spin on your image it's a little bit different than the camera profiles but don't get too concerned with what a dcp is and what it is and it's not really that important in the grand scheme of everything that we do all right so what I'm going to do is select on one portrait, and I think that that looks good. Now we get into the meat and potatoes of what it actually takes to modify your images. And this is where the tone aspect of this really comes into play. Now, Bruins AI, it kind of set these to where it thinks it should be. If I think that the photo is too bright because it did add a little bit of exposure, I can just pull down on this exposure because I do like somewhat darker contrasty images. This is a personal preference, and this is where you start to set yourself apart from everyone else who's using the same AI tools and things of that sort. So now we're going to come down here and pull up on the contrast just a little bit, uh, maybe not too much more than that, because I think that this is a very heavy handed way of getting contrast. So once we have our contrast situated the way that we probably need to have it then we're going to go ahead and modify our highlights you can pull these down these are just the brightest areas of your image don't be overly concerned about this just pull them to a point where you think that they look good and i think that this is probably okay 
Then what I'm gonna do is leave my midtones alone. I don't really have any shadows that I need to open, all right? Shadows are like those areas that are dark, but they're not pure black. And I'm okay with what this did here. There's nothing that I really, like, I don't need detail in this area. I don't really need detail under here. I don't need detail any in, in really any of those locations, right? Not as important because this is the star of the photo or the subject of the photo frame between these two athletes and kind of got photo bomb, photo bombed by the ref, but it is what it is. I can't tell the ref not to be in my shot, right? So let's get back to modifying the tones. We're going to go ahead and pull down on the blacks here a little bit. And again, this is seasoning to taste, all right? We've already cooked the meal. Now we're seasoning things to taste to make sure that it's going to be received in a positive way. So I think that this is good. If I hold down the backslash key, this is the before. It's a little dark, probably not the best uh, overall photo, but when I go ahead and, or let go of the backslash key, I end up with a photo that looks pretty good. All right, now that we have our tone situated, I'm not really going to mess with structure. I like what Brilliance AI did here. And this is one of the benefits of using a tool like Brilliance AI. And then it's going to modify the color here. I think this wall is just getting way too much color. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down on the vibrance here. And I'm going to take note to what this is doing to the overall image. Now, I think I enjoy the vibrance on the actual person, the subject there. So what I'm going to do is pull this down and I pulled this down to a five. It was originally at 20 points. Uh, that's what I'm going to call it, 20 points. And so I need to reinstate that, but specifically over the people. I'm going to do that. And I couldn't say specifically right. I'm going to go ahead and click on effects and I'm going to hit add filter. And this one is going to be a color enhancer. You might as well just use the color enhancer every time you want to do something to color uh, if you're going to use one of the color tools. The reason for that is because you get this vibrant slider. Now, I know that it was at 20 and that's what I enjoyed on the person. So I need to add this into fit or add 15 points to this. The reason why I'm adding 15 is because the develop module, I have this set at five. Go back to color. I have this set at five. So to get to 20, the difference is 15. Just simple math there, all right? Yes, we have to use math and photography sometimes. So now that I have this ready to go, what I need to do is only apply this particular edit to the people and not the wall because that's kind of not what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the, or scroll up to the top of this particular filter click on the mask icon, and that's gonna bring this little properties window up. I'm gonna close this so you can see that it actually pops up. I leave mine open because I use it so frequently that you know I need to leave it open. But if I click there, you can see it pops back up. It remembers where I put it last. I like mine over here to the left. It just seems to be the most uh, relevant place to have it, uh, especially for tutorials. But if you have a second monitor and you would prefer to put it on that second monitor so it's not covering your workspace, then I recommend doing that. Or if you have a wider screen monitor, you know, just figure out what works best for you. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and select the region for the masking. I'm going to select people. And then I want to paint this effect in to just the people. So I'm going to select paint in and then i'm going to hit apply and what that's going to do is think itself through figure out where the people are in the image i'm going to hit the letter o so you can see that mask and look at how well it identified this ball is not a person and that's my mask now again i kind of like what it did to everyone in the photo but if i didn't what I could do is come over here, hit the letter O, make my brush size a little bit larger, and I could paint this away from everyone else that is in this particular image. Now, I have a good photo here where it's easy for on one to identify what a person is in the photo and what a person may not be. Sometimes it's harder for on one to figure out where the people are. 
it typically does a good job, but just know like using AI technology, sometimes you're going to have to fine tune it. And that's kind of the crux of this entire episode here, or this entire video is you got to know when to use the AI completely and when to modify what the AI gives you, because it's just a starting point. So now that we have this, everything, you know, set up the way that it probably ought to be. Now it's time to really hone in on the individual in the center here and make him stand out a little bit more. There's a few ways that you could do this. You can do this with local adjustments. So I could take the local adjustment and I am going to grab my refine tool or a refine brush. And then what I'm going to do is select just the person with the ball by loosely painting around the edges of him. And this is called the encircling tool. I personally like to call this the subject selection option because on one does not have a subject selection, but this allows me to give information to on one of what I want it to make a mask around. And it does a pretty decent job. So I'm just going to let that go. It's going to think itself through again. And eventually it's going to render a result that looks something like that. And honestly, I can live with that. Is it great? No. And again, I could clean this up if I needed to. All I have to do is go back to my actual brushing tools and I can make a smaller brush come around the edge here and I can just paint that aspect all the way. And I could also repaint this to make it a better selection overall. There's so many things that I could do, but for the sake of making this tutorial, you know, reasonably timed, I'm not going to sit here and uh, nitpick fixing every single aspect of this because for what I want to do, I think it's going to give me the result. Now, I don't want a negative exposure on the subject. In fact, I want it on the background. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and click the invert option over here which is this little circle with a half uh, filled in and half not filled in area. And you can see it puts that selection over the background. So now the basketball player is really, really starting to stand out. There's a few things you want to do whenever you work with AI mask is you want to apply some feather. That's going to give you kind of a little bit of spread. But also with this particular one, if I hit the letter O, you can see how that's kind of coming around him and it's actually doing a pretty decent job with the spread, but maybe not on his shoe. So, or maybe his shoe is just that dark. So maybe that is just the way his shoe is. No worries. Now, what I want to do is kind of blend this in. So that negative one exposure is way too much. And maybe something like this looks a little bit more natural. I'll go ahead and pull up on the feather. And you can see if I turn this effect off and on, you can see it just kind of dims the overall image. And I like doing that before I do the next step, which is going to be a vignette. So the way that I do that, I'm going to call this pre-dim just so that way we can kind of keep up. Uh, the way that I do my vignettes is inside of the local adjustment section. And all I'm going to do is hit the letter M. Oh, hit the letter M two times. That gives me my masking bug. I'm going to make sure that I have a uh, vignette tool. Click here in the center and you can see it kind of morphs in and gives me a vignette shape. Now all I'm going to do is drag this in to my subject, rotate it around to fit the you know shape of the individual. And then I'm going to drag this out like so. And now I have my overall scene getting the look that I want. And what I like to do is pull down just a little bit more. So now I'm adding that negative exposure again, but uh, it doesn't, it, it gradually fades in essentially because I did my initial fade and now I'm doing a second fade on top of that. That's kind of gradient uh, out. So it kind of fades from the center here going all the way up. And then what I'm going to do is I like to remove some structure on here and that just kind of blurs out everything else around and makes it a little bit easier. Like I want to be able to see the surroundings, but I do want the focus to be on 
this particular uh, person here. So I'm going to copy this mask, come over to effects. And this time I'm going to add a uh, lens blur. You can add a regular blur. It doesn't really matter. This is, you know, stylistic choice at this point, but I'm going to paste my mask and you can see now, but just get rid of that overlay. You can see now that I have a pretty decent look on the, or it's like a focus in this particular subject. And, you know, you can tell that there are people on the left and right of him or front and side of him, but the focus is on the primary subject here. And there's so many more things that I could do. Uh, but at this point, I think I'm ready for stylizing the image. And that's what I really enjoy about using On One Photo Raw. So I've already added some effects. How do I stylize this photo? Well, if I right click here and I go and duplicate the layer and another trick, you can just create a solid layer underneath it. But, and now if I right click again, I get this new stamped layer option. But let me show you the other trick really quick. So let's go ahead and hit delete layer. And then I am going to click on this paint bucket doesn't matter what the color is, then I hit okay. I'm gonna put this underneath the layer with our actual athletes on it. So I'm just gonna pull this layer underneath. And now when I right click, I can do a new stamped layer. It's going to merge all of the effects from this layer into a brand new layer for us to work with that doesn't have any effects. And this one, I'm going to label style. And this one, I'm going to label OG for original. And at this point, I don't even need this color fill layer anymore. So I can delete it because I have what I need for my style layer. Let's go ahead and close that out. And then I come over here to the AI style, divide, uh, style advisor. We'll go ahead and click that. On one's going to look through and it doesn't give me the greatest selections for my own styles right now. And you know, that's a work in progress, but what it does is it gives you the on one team's style advice. And for the sake of just showing you why didn't it pull up all of them? There we go. There's some things that don't always work perfectly inside of on one, but what I can do is make these a little bit larger now and now I'm purely looking at what style do I prefer on this image? Do I like this kind of muted toned image? Do I want something that's a little bit more, uh, less saturated? Do I want something with more contrast and crunch and grunge to it? Let's see what else on one is suggesting here. There's a pure black and white one, and that looks like super retro, probably not the one that I want, but. Just scrolling through here, taking a look to see what style really speaks to me. I think the one up here, it's between these two, to be honest. So I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go ahead and click that. It's going to apply the style. Now, these styles can be a little heavy handed at times, but what you can do as, you know, just a person using on one photo raw is you could actually blend the opacity of this style in with your original OG image, like so, and get something that isn't as harsh. I like to use the styles in order to get something that looks different in modifying them. So it's really important that you understand what's happening to your image. And you'll learn that over time, the more you start to use the software, the more you edit and really you pay attention to what's going on. So now I think I'm at my final image for, for this. So if I go ahead and turn off the style, this is the image that we edited. This is what came into on one photo raw before I did any edits. This is with the edits of whatever we applied for the lens blur, the color enhancer, as well as the brilliance AI. And then I went ahead and applied a simple style 
And that's what we got. So hopefully you found some value in today's content. If you did, smash the like button. If you got questions, leave them in the comment section down below, or you can send me an email and I do get back to all of my inquiries. Uh, sometimes longer, it takes a little bit longer, but I do get to them. Now, if you want to pick up a copy of On One Photo Raw, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. You'll save 20% when you check out. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.